Hey folks, so this is a different style video for you today. It's sort of a how-to slash vlog of my journey into two-channel audio being predominantly a headphone guy. See, we moved from a tiny 620 square foot apartment in New York City to 1,800 square feet in the burbs. So that means we finally have some space to play with. In this first part, I'll go over setting up the entertainment center. Then in the second, I'll show how this $500 system ended up costing uh, a little bit more. That's right, being an audio nut is a sickness and it must be cured. But might as well vlog it along the way. Enjoy. Okay, so what do we have here? We just moved in, or we moved in a couple months ago. We have a nice little mid-century modern TV console, or TV stand. And as much as I love the look of these things, they leave the bottom very exposed to all sorts of wires. So number one priority is to clean that up. Also, we've just got a record player from U-Turn Audio, and we want to add that into the mix. Unfortunately, this 48-inch TV is taking up most of the, the top level space here. So we're going to hang this on the wall and just clean things up and make it look better and just go through that process. Okay, so the first part of putting a TV wall mount on your wall is finding the studs. You can't just hang on the drywall. I thought, like everyone else, you need to go on Amazon and search for a nice wall stud finder, but they range anywhere from 20 bucks to over 100, and people in the comments always say they don't work, uh, and I've definitely had that experience in the past. So I went on some construction forums, and they said, take a string, get a really strong neodymium magnet, tape it to the string, and then go across your wall looking for the uh, the stud because they use a nail to hammer the drywall into the stud. And I thought that was kind of ludicrous, but luckily we had a couple of these at home. They're cheaper than a wall stud finder. So just get yourself a string, tape it, and then boom, look at that. There's a nail, so we know that there's a stud here. And the thing is, there's not gonna be nails running all along the stud. You have to kind of go in a wave pattern to find where the, the stud could be. So that may take some time, but also think, see there's the other one, about 16 inches apart, which is a standard uh, measurement for the space between studs. All right, for our next bit, we need a sword slash owl, A-W-L. This is a sharp tool that'll pierce through drywall so you can find out exactly where the stud starts and ends. So what I did is I measured the height of the TV, which was 25 inches, and I placed it, we wanted it above the speakers here. So we measured it from here to here, then we went 12 and a half right in the middle, marked our spot, and that should be where the middle of the TV mount will be. So we're gonna put it around here, and we have the template that they gave us. From the middle of this, let's just kind of eyeball it. Should be here and here. All right. All right, stud is there. Can't go through any further. Okay, the stud is not there. So now we're gonna go over here on this side. Stud is there, uh, yeah. not there. So we can safely say the stud is between this hole and this hole. So we're gonna drill right there. Okay, we have the template up. As much as I would have lo loved to shown you the process and recorded it, it was a two person job. So needed my lovely camera woman to help me along with this. The fun part was not only getting these holes to be in the center of the stud, they gave they give you this cheap little level with it and then make sure it's in the center here, but we didn't trust this. So we used our own level and a laser level too. And we finally got it leveled. So we have our template ready, and uh, here is the TV mount itself. So again, we don't have to put it at the very end. It's meant for 16 inch space between the studs, but you know, not everything's perfect. So we, you may do it here, you may do it in the middle. Well, we're gonna be close to the edge ourselves. Okay, we got our hole that's in between our test holes. So we're just gonna start with our little impact drill. Just really quickly, I, I don't want to put more of these holes all, all over the wall, especially on the bottom. So what I do is I get my little laser level. You can just line up where the bubble is and there it gets in the center and then make sure it matches up with the hole on top and then you're golden. So at this point, we got our four holes drilled. Now we're gonna take the template off. 
Beautiful holes. All right. Now we need a washer. Just follow the instructions, too. Don't just listen to me. All right. We got our wall mount on the wall. This is probably the hardest part of the whole thing. But uh, yeah, it's a mess. We'll clean this up later. But one thing to note, it's important. Make sure up is actually up. Uh, I made sure that was the case before we had it on situated on the wall. Okay, now we're gonna put the brackets on the back of the TV. And again, I wanna stress this, I love this TV mount because it gives you two settings for how high you want it off the ground. You could connect it to the wall mount with this setting, mode one, they call it, or mode two. So you have some height options. Okay, TV's up and I knew it wouldn't be perfect, but as you can see with the level on top, looks like the left side is a little higher. You can actually adjust this. Another cool thing about this TV mount, push it down a little bit. Let's pull it down until this is level. Goldilocks, you gotta get it just right. There you go. Close enough. And to tighten it this way, it's in the back, there's these four bolts. See where the red arrows are? So you get plus or minus four degrees left or right. Okay, TV's up but the TV stands out. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here. If you remember when the TV stand was there, we had a bunch of cabling issues and you saw the wiring underneath since it's that fancy mid-century modern that's on these little legs. But my solution is twofold. First of all, the power strip. It's gonna be this, let me show you the box. So it's this baby. You can turn the power outlets to your liking and you can't deny this, the wall plug. So it doesn't jut out from the wall, it has a flat, and it looks like it, it rotates, so it doesn't go one way or the other. You can twist it to your needs. To mount it underneath here, maybe give it a, not directly on the edge, maybe an inch or two in, so all the power bricks and stuff have space to breathe, and then you're just running the cables up from there. And to make sure these cables don't reach the floor, we have these J channels. Get the J channel cable managers, here, just a bunch. Don't put them right flush next to each other. Give it maybe two inches in between so you can uh, get the cables up and into the J channels. All right, drilled our other hole in there. So let's plop it on. It's very satisfying when it just matches up, right? Oh my gosh, look at that. Hell yes. All right, we got our double-sided tape here. Put it on the J channel first, as the directions say. Use two levels. I had a bit extra, so I put it on the side. So let's put it down. Doesn't need to be super level, just enough where it'll catch the wire. And I, I made sure the sticker didn't try to get these nails. Another thing to point out, because I know uh, at some point we're inevitably all gonna use these big power bricks. And they're always annoying, so if you plug them in here, then it just takes up so much space and you could probably see this from underneath the uh, TV console. What we're gonna do is use a little extender, like, this, like so, so we could funnel it through the J channel here and then have that power, that ugly power brick behind the TV console instead of underneath it. They sell these in bulk on Amazon, they're super cheap. Just make sure they're UL or ETL listed. This one's ETL. So this is the result, you know, this is a nice, very clean connection here and we give the space for behind the TV console. It's ugly, you know, but the thing is no one looks at it. If it's underneath here, then you can see it. So this is the end result. We'll see how it works when it's actually in play. So you've seen these before. These little wire sheathing like kind of hides the wires, has a double stick tape already mounted on the back because this one's really long. You can put it in a miter box like this and then use the saw. This whole thing was 14 bucks, if you can believe it. These things are usually more expensive. So as for video sources and uh, HD streamers, I was using this, kind of old school at this point, but it's a Roku 3 HD. Uh, it fit the bill, it's a little choppy at times as far as the UI is concerned. The thing is you would have to plug this into a power source and run an HDMI cable. We opted to upgrade and we got the new Google Chromecast with Google TV. That plugs in directly here to the HDMI port. It just hangs off the TV. We have the uh, USB type C plug here, and we're gonna funnel that through there. So that's great, one less cable we need. So we got our toss link funneled through our TV stand, and it is connected to a Modi. 
So here it is all hooked up. We have the uh, phono preamp here for the record player. Uh, here are the high pass crossover uh, adapters connected. And just a quick note about these crossovers. As much as I love the Fluence AI40 speakers, they can be boomy, despite turning the bass all the way down. These inline crossovers blocked everything lower than 500 hertz and made our downstairs neighbors like us that much better. Okay, nearing the end, got the record players, speakers. Let's check the wiring in back. I think we're at the final version of the wiring setup. As for the rest, it's not pretty, but it works. Got the power bricks here. They're super annoying to deal with. I hate them so much, but it is what it is. So finally got the Chromecast working. Even with Google's own power adapter, it does not work uh, because I was using a third-party cable. How annoying is that? They say in their instructions, um, you must use the, uh, the power cable that came with it, which is this one, but it only goes five feet, so it won't work for application. How annoying is that? So what I ended up doing is I had a USB-C to USB-C cable and I have a power adapter that is USB-C. And USB-C is always high power um, with their PD standard. So that worked just fine. So I'll be using this from now on. And there it all is, finally done. Look how clean it is on the bottom. Pretty amazing. Got a record player, got a Google Chromecast. I got the PlayStation there. Got the records in here. And the drawer has all the PlayStation goodies hidden out of view. And look at the power cable. It just hooks right directly up there so it doesn't even touch the floor. I could probably straighten that out, but I'm too lazy right now. But yeah, happy how it all turned out. So that does it for part one. Hopefully this how-to provides some tips for those looking to do the same. Stay tuned for part two, where the audio devil on my shoulder keeps telling me I need to upgrade components in my system. So look out for that, and we'll see you then.